Anyong hadola. It's yedo. Anyong yedola. <laughs> All right. Uh, elementary crush, chaperone dates, high school sweethearts, and the love of your life. Join us last week as M4 joins us to talk about romantic relationships. We discuss about what makes our mind tick, our heart melt, but more importantly, M4's Tinder tactics. Oh, I thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> I was tempted to, too. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, this week you got me here, Jorge. This is Viv. And I'm our star. Our star's back. Let's Welcome go. back. Um, so, yeah, lots <laughs> lots going on. I think uh, our star's an exciting week, but I'll, I'll start for now. <laughs> My week, not as exciting. Um, let's see, anything crazy? No, just really busy. I've been uh, sleeping a little too late, so I'm pretty upset about that. Very. Unfortunate. I'm very upset. Whoa. You're gonna die early buddy. i'm that's exactly what was on my mind <laughs> and then now than that just rock climbing this week this is the second week going so that was pretty fun you took up rock climbing bouldering yeah i started um yeah i, I said every single time someone says rock climbing they're like you mean bouldering oh yeah i mean bouldering <laughs> yeah Viv, Viv corrected me last time so i was like fuck this bitch <laughs> uh yeah oh i mean so i get free two weeks when, when i went to this new gym so i had to use it and then never going again, probably. Don't I mean, know. not for a while. It's just so hard to put in my schedule right now. I have to figure some shit out to put it in. Uh, anything else exciting? No, not. I'm trying to think. No, just going to be a interesting weekend. Have a party-ish. An event at the temple I have to go to. So that'll be fun. A party? Oh, is that that new temple? one that opened up? Um, yeah, it's been open for a while. But um, oh. it's, um, it's like every year they have a dinner. Like on 97, like, right? It, no, no, no. It, well... It, 97 and 153rd right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah that one yeah so every year they have like this nice dinner and um yeah so i'm i have to go it's like a fancy dinner it's like expensive but i wouldn't say fancy because it's vegetarian oh, is food it ja- oh, whoa. <laughs> they make jai like fancy like it's at the temple now like we used to do at restaurants oh like but, they uh, make like a steak but it's actually made of like no mushrooms I mean, so I'm always conflicted about that. I was like, if you want to be vegetarian, that's cool. For whatever reason you want to be. But like, why do you want your food to look and taste like meat then? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just kind of weird. It doesn't mean that they... Oh, I looked this up before. But okay. it doesn't mean that they don't like to taste the meat. But they just don't like... The cruelty. Or yeah, like the, the cruelty, the practice that somebody oh. has to lose a life for them to do that. So that you could have the taste of it. That's great. I guess. I guess they don't mind Which is eating. why they support like laboratory grown things. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. I mean, yeah. That's I'd, the argument. That'd be pretty good. I don't know, like, just a little afraid of for my health for that one, for the lab, lab-grown lab vegetarian meat, but... Really? I, yeah, even, well, uh, even some of the, you know, like, the plant-based burgers and stuff, I hear is actually, like, quote-unquote, less healthy, like, however you define healthy is, than just eating regular meat. Yeah. But oh, obviously, why? like, there's, there's other reasons why people eat it, there, but... There's so much shit in it, it feels like. Like, so much, un- I don't know. I guess, like, natural or not, it just feels weird. Like, well, the other thing is, like, in my opinion, like, there's one argument that I still have to look up a bit more, but it's about bioavailability. So, like, although you're eating this amount of protein, so say, like, 100 grams of chicken protein, per se, but how much is it available for your body to actually use? Right? Oh. So, for example, like, whey is almost 100%. So, almost all the whey protein you intake is accessible for from your body for most people but for example like pea protein or other types of stuff it's not as mm. accessible so maybe only like 70 percent of what you intake it <clears throat> will actually be used right mm. <clears throat> that's how they sold um bcaas to people well, they're what, saying what, if you take more bcaas and it helps yeah synthesize the protein and you can use more protein Ooh, wait so you don't believe in bcaas i thought you told me you did i think it's like I feel like it works, but oh, then like and that's all that matters like, for you, right? I mean, I think I'll, I think I've told our star this a lot before, but I think like the mental aspect is so much more. So yeah. if, if you believe something that's is gonna work, like I, I say, just just go for it. Just yeah. just go with the placebo. I think the placebo is stronger than the actual effects. Like I want to say it works because when I used to take it like regularly, I felt like I saw more muscle definition, I saw more gains and everything. But then I was also training harder, so it's I, supposed I, to help <laughs> with recovery too. I, I think it's it's like creatine. I feel like it's one of those like low risk things. Like it's, yeah. it doesn't cost that much. So it's like, why not kind of thing? And like, there's no, like there's no reason why it's bad for you because it's essentially the protein you would normally eat, but already broken down. Right. Mm-hmm. So like, there's no risk or not no risk, but very low risk. <clears throat> Anyways, Viv, how's your week before we cap off the highlight, man? <laughs> um. Well, over the weekend, we went to a wedding. 
Oh, oh, oh I totally bitch. forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we went to a wedding. That was a lot of fun. I had, um, I missed the games part of the wedding, unfortunately. Like door games? Not No, not door games. Like when they sit on the dance floor and they, like, I don't know what they did because I missed the whole thing, but... I'm guessing when you raise a shoe saying like, no, oh, who's whatever. I don't think they played that. I have no idea what they did. You don't know. I'm pretty sure Weren't they did. were you there? I was there, but I think they only played the musical chair one. Oh, okay. It was just one. Because right, I, I left I with um, a few <laughs> friends to go get lit. And when we came back, everyone was like, you guys miss the whole game section. We're like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I actually cannot remember what other games we played. I didn't drink that well, much that night. One of the games that we played was um, where you remove one chair. It's oh, a musical chair. It's musical chair, but like instead of music, it's like you had to find certain objects and yeah. the, the first oh. X amount of people to bring it back. Or like X minus one. scavenger hunt kind of. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Like you would have to grab your phone and go run and take yeah. a picture of or go take like a selfie in the washroom or go take a selfie with the groom's mom oh. so people would run for it yeah and fuck i was so close i mean I, okay. I took my shoes off so i could run so like my table had just chris and he was the one who got to play yeah and i was telling him, I was like guys we had the maximum in this and like we didn't complete maximum but we, we did pretty well i was like okay whatever he needs we just bring it to him he just takes a picture and he'll instantly get, get to sit down right was he second he was first Oh yeah, oh. but I was telling them too. I was like, guys, you don't even need to bring the object to him. Like, just take a picture on your phone and give him your phone, and then you, he'll instant win. Damn, right? that's genius. Is or that just, what you did? No, 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 no. But I kept telling them, I was like, guys, like, don't even bring the object. Just take a picture and give him the phone. Or just oh fucking my god, text him the picture. Man, these guys don't know how I to max win these fast. games. <laughs> yeah, people don't know how to max win these games. I'm telling you. Damn, I was barbaric. I just ran and I mean, there's no prize, so there's no no. The pride is winning. The prize, the prize is the, the prize pride. Is winning. The prize is the pride. Winning. <laughs> Who cares? <sighs> so sad. And then we tried going to Sylvan Lake on Monday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we went for like an hour and it was cold as shit and r- rainy and windy. So we just left after like an hour. And then this Karen at the cafe that we were waiting at yelled at us for being too loud. Damn. Yeah. Did you ask her where her name was? It was actually Karen. Oh, no. Oh, damn. Wait, anyways. <laughs> and, Wait, but then we. No, I didn't want to go. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, oh right. Sylvan Lake on a Labor Day. I don't know. It's just... It was completely dead because it was really cold. So we tried to seize the day still by getting lit at our friend's house. Nice. <laughs> and then we went to a nearby park and played grass volleyball, which is pretty fun. Damn. In the cold. Oh, wait. No, it was really warm in Edmonton. Like hot as shit oh. in Edmonton, but cold as fuck in Sylvan. Damn. Yeah. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Yeah. And then on... Wednesday, I had a photo shoot. A friend of mine asked me if I wanted to model for this new menu that this cafe called Brew and Bloom has. And I said yes, but I was actually very uncomfortable when I got there because I had to do things. I thought it was just like focus on the food and I had to like sit there and like, like I was model. told. No, not hand model. Like I was told that it was like a date setting. So I was like, okay, that's fine. I can just sit there, like talk to a guy, whatever. It's cool. But I didn't know they would get us to do like intimate things like like. There was not even any food involved for some of the shots. So he would like hand me flowers. And I would have to act surprised or we'd have to like look into each other's eyes or there was a milkshake in the middle and we both had to like sip out of it. I was like, what the fuck is this for? Don't <laughs> what the? I don't know. Maybe I'm a lost breed. Or like but... feed the other person. I was like, oh, yeah, God. were you both single? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so uncomfortable. I mean, yeah, like I said, maybe I'm a lost breed, but I think the best places on earth are stuff like Turkaz and Swiss where they just make Good goddamn food, and that's oh, all yeah, they I was care gonna about. Ask you wanted turkas today. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, and then that's the highlights. Nice. Wait, I forgot one thing. One important thing. I think Viv would really like. I watched was it everything everywhere. Oh Lola. shit! Whoa. How'd you like it? It was really good. Really good. I, did you I, were you able I, to I, absorb I, everything? Yes, I did cry a bit. I I do cry mm-hmm. a lot of movies. I'm a I'm a movie crier, but um yeah, it was it was pretty good. I thought it was uh. I don't know. For some reason, I text Joyce. I was like, I think you'll really like it. You know, Asian female. This is pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> I always sympathize because I have a sister. So I was like, fuck, man. They have it rough. Mm. Did you watch it? Or yeah. did she give you a response? No, no. Oh, she hasn't watched it yet. Okay. But she just hasn't responded to you since. <laughs> like, yeah. Fuck, this movie sucks. <laughs> no, dude, I thought, I don't know. It, it felt like it was one of the movies where um, the Russo brothers 
wanted to do something regardless of fame or fortune and they just did it i actually i don't know if they were the main reason but they were the the di- the di- directors right they they wanted this for the purpose of it not necessarily for the money or the fame of it if that makes sense so in, in my opinion most this would have got like shut down by most producers and directors and stuff but i thought it was really nice that they did what like they thought was right rather than what would make them a lot of money because like they didn't have a lot of like like a list so, so, like a a listers or anything like that and like i'm pretty sure their sets weren't like super crazy or anything like that like it was cool <laughs> but like rock scene <laughs> yeah it, it was cool but it wasn't like um you know what i mean like you knew it wasn't like a crazy 4k like mm-hmm. it wasn't about that stuff it was just about the purpose and it felt kind of nice that there were movies like that still when i went to watch it me and my friends we all got high before we went and that movie was insane (laughs) (laughs) yes why because you were higher because no like Like both like yeah it's one of those movies it's like okay i remember one time i watched like did it make you feel like you were high when you're watching because some of the Maybe it, some some of it was messed up. Like no, I I can definitely tell if you're high, weird. that movie's gonna like blow your fucking mind. <laughs> yeah, but it was similar to like you guys remember that movie Valentine's Day? I think I keep bringing it up where there's like 50 different like yeah. cast people. There's like just a billion like couples and shit. And I watched that high, and I was like, dude, who's doing what? To who? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's going on? So I can definitely tell for that movie, you'd probably be really confused for a bit. <laughs> yeah, holy shit. But it was it was a good movie. And he's our star. Uh, want to tell us about your week? Honestly, my well, like this week, uh, I was gone to Hawaii. Uh, but the last three weeks has just kind of melded all together because uh, it was like Hawaii for a week. The week before mm-hmm. that was like, um, just like finishing up uh stuff after the wedding, and just like working for a couple of days. And then yeah, the week before that was like leading up to the wedding. So yeah, like I got married, you know, three weeks Woo! ago. Congrats. congratulations so yeah uh but yeah all the all like the whole like month pretty much meshed together but uh yeah the the week was good it was uh like a lot of like go 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 in hawaii we did a lot of cool things uh, mostly like sightseeing and stuff and so it was my first time in hawaii um and it reminded me a lot of um like mexico yeah uh, so it's like a cross between like i would say like mexico la kind of like yeah like the vibe the feel of yeah it, like the, the scenery the, the environment yeah is very just similar. how everybody's like very um like lively on the on the streets and stuff everybody's like walking outside doing stuff um and yeah people just literally doing shit <laughs> like that's the best way i can explain it but uh yeah it was really good um the food was surprisingly like nothing really wowed me out of out of hawaii and I, I guess it's like for good reason because it's mo- like people mostly go there for like like the scenery, you know, all that stuff, the weather and stuff. Yeah. So like the food was good. Don't get me wrong. But there was just nothing that was like, oh, my God, like I have to go to Hawaii just to eat this, you know. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, Not even a poke. Hmm? Like what if you love salmon? Like think about Not it this way. Like, how, like, OK, so. Like how much better can you make salmon like Especially raw, raw salmon, <laughs> right? Like true. <laughs> how are you gonna cut this, bro? <laughs> okay, so we went to a very bougie um poke place and literally we lined up uh like forty five minutes before they opened and there was already a line. And then uh so then like fifteen minutes before they opened, there was a fucking huge truck that pulled in and they took crates of fresh fish. Mm. into the restaurant so like that's how fresh their poke was right but like <laughs> apart from that it's like yeah you know what i mean like how much better can you make this i i still stand by my belief that like the raw fish has to be aged a bit for it to taste better oh because that's what i hear the japanese people say so i was like uh, oh it must be right really why is that maybe those giant crates of fish came from a giant freezer mm, <laughs> well okay so the rationale is like when you age stuff it dries out a little bit and then it gets more more flavorful. Oh, so like it, like, like the flavor gets steak. more intense. Like dry mm. steak, I guess. Yeah, well, it's like apparently. So I've never done this, but apparently, if you just caught a fish, just killed it, and you like eat it on the boat type of thing, it w- would have like that sea salty flavor. But that's about it. Like the rest of the fishy flavor won't be as pronounced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But whereas if you age it a bit, and once it dries a bit, it gets more intense. Yeah, I can see that. It's like very light. 
Yeah. So like, yeah, well, that's what I saw in a couple, like not even a couple, like a lot of the YouTube videos of like Japanese, like restaurants and stuff in Japan and stuff. A lot of them, they would pre-cut everything and then they want to age it for a bit before they serve it. Oh, very like, nice. Like, like, like a week before they serve it. Uh -huh. So it's like not necessarily the freshest is the best for that. Well, you have to tell me when you try it because yeah. uh, like what I noticed was like the fish is very like tender, very soft and yeah. very like marbled. Yeah. Um, and then uh, like apart from that, like the only other thing that I noticed is like, do you know, do you guys know what like sang? Yeah. 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 It's is? like a fishy yeah. fishiness. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. So like it was less sang than yeah, like, yeah, yeah. whatever. Yeah. So um, yeah, apart from that, like poke was Wait, but for me. do you not like the fishiness? I like the fishiness, but yeah. like saying, saying is, is like not a, a good thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. Like, do you think you're disgusting? No, but like, <laughs> like, don't you think nut mum is like very like a legit nut mum? Not like you the ones from a describe it as saying though. I mean, it's a very pungent, fishy smell. Like, if you legit make nut mum, not like the ones from like a manufactured bottle. Like, like, for example, the one I got in Vietnam when I was like eating the stuff there, I was like, oh shit, this is like the real deal. Oh, but they they I I thought it's just like potent fish sauce like with mixed with a bunch of other stuff when you make it because it's like fish sauce like you know the cooking fish sauce yeah it's like that with water and like lemon ginger or not ginger garlic chili i have no idea sugar. how it is but i just remember like i don't know i i guess maybe it's not the exact same as the saying yeah i, I see why it's like it's a, a I think negative kind connotation of like for it like the when milk goes bad yeah. versus cheese like mm. cheese doesn't smell the same as soured milk yes 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 mm. yeah but true, they're true. the same thing. I mean, could. Yeah, other than that, like, there wasn't really that much uh, differentiation. And then, yeah, so like, my, my most memorable meal was probably eating Spam Masubi and shaved ice, which is, like, what Hawaii's known for. Nice. But it wasn't, like, blow my brains out, like, amazing meal. You know? Was that your happiest moment? Oh, my oh. happiest moment? No, my happiest moment was when I went surfing. And nice. I stood up for the first time. That was wow. pretty sick. Uh, well, I guess that's a segue into our today's topic is about happiness. Um, so I think this is a little bit pre-planned. So I'll admit this is a little bit pre-planned. I was not in on this. Yeah, but I, I just wanted to like start off with some very basic level happy stuff. Right. So like He's even start playing porn, <laughs> <laughs> just, start, just start going on the hub. I was like, yeah, this is it. I mean, I, I think we have some very deep questions in in today's podcast but i just want to start with some lighter ones so like i think there are certain things that just like have give you that instantaneous happiness right just like just like for example if you walk Slap by on the ass uh not necessarily <laughs> not necessarily but like okay if you find a five dollar bill on the ground no one's there is that just like so ooh, this this feels good you know this is like yeah you know buddha's got my back like today not, is, would you say that's what? like pleasure or happiness Okay, so Ooh. what's the difference then if you think it's not one or the other? I like I actually don't know. I I, I don't know the answer to any of these. No. Okay, can you Google it? What's the difference <laughs> between pleasure and happiness? Yeah. I mean, pleasure would be like if you ask that question, our star, what do you think is the difference? Well, I think I don't know. I I think pleasure for me is like something that makes me feel. He's gonna say happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, like. Like something that you can kind of sense, whereas like happiness, I feel like is more like deep inside. Like I don't know. Oh. No, For me, anyway. I I do think pleasure is more shallow because uh you pleasure yourself. You That's don't what I was happy yourself. Oh. But you do get happy endings. <laughs> oh, wait, is that yeah? That's that's the right terminology, yeah. right? Yeah. So I don't know now. Actually, I just confused myself there. Happy <laughs> endings, pleasure yourself. Huh. Uh, I guess happy endings are a higher level than pleasuring yourself. <laughs> Actually, if I think about it, the way you use the word pleasure versus happy, happy does seem like a more like intense, en encompassing, intense feeling versus pleasure is just Ple it's just good. Pleasure just feels like, like it's a pleasure to meet you. It's, it's pleasure is mine. OK, here's here's a slight my connotation of it. Pleasure would be like waking up Saturday morning in my pajamas, watching some cartoons, eating some cereal. It's like, oh, this is nice, comfortable. That's pleasure, in my opinion. But I don't know, like all these terminologies could be very can, intermixed. Can you just Google the definition of pleasure? <clears throat> just to see. Right. Pleasure. What was it say? Satisfaction or enjoyment. Of happy satisfaction and enjoyment. User int uh, intended for entertainment rather than business. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Ooh. It could be for business. Get, right. Give sexual enjoyment or satisfaction to. 
Tell me, happy. tell me what will pleasure you. That's the example they give. Happy feeling or oh, showing fuck. pleasure or contentment? <laughs> Motherfuckers! <laughs> it's a loophole. Pharrell Williams is here. It's the classic search for a definition of like a long Fucking word and they it. take a portion of the word yeah. and they put it in the definition. You define the word with the word itself. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? But anyways, uh, what are some that you guys can kind of remember on a day-to-day basis? So like, uh, I guess one of them would be eating. for me, yeah, like... Eat, like not even just eating though because like i'm i'm a generally very like optimistic happy person but like eating a treat would be you know that instant gratification but it doesn't go anywhere beyond that it's like it's just mouth pleasure right and but it's like very instant and very short-lived i well for me like even just eating is like i feel as I was, I was gonna say pleasure but <laughs> like it makes me happy like i don't know why it's like if you're hungry, like you, I feel like I'm in like a state of like discomfort or like I'm just not happy when I'm when I'm hungry, right? That's why people say like, oh, like you're hangry. Right. Like I genuinely get hangry when I'm like starving. Right, right. And then so like too. even just like the act of eating and like making myself full, I feel like I would consider happiness. Or not, I, okay, not happiness, but like do, it would make me happy. Do Do you guys think that? Um Here's a quick thought on that. The instant gratification stuff is almost more primal. Like eating, for example, is a very primal thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like you do it and I feel like the happiness is literally directed to uh, our brains giving a primal response saying like, hey, this is a good thing. You know, you're getting more full, right? And like, for example, sex. Like I'm not saying sex isn't just like, there's more to it, but I think like a lot, a portion of it is a very instantaneous happiness, right? Right, but it's because you're, you're basically saying like your body or your brain is like programmed to like feel pleasure or like excitement from that because it's what your body was made up of to like survive right 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 but like what i'm saying is like the difference between something more primal than like oh i just graduated from this thing it becomes more like a different type of happiness but also because it's less primal right Oh, but, interesting. You know what I mean? Like, it, the primal part is like, it literally connects to you Our trying to survive, yeah. right? But yeah, that's that's what I was wearing too. I think. Uh, so then, would you consider taking a shit and being like. <laughs> I mean, do you guys never get that really good feeling where like you just empty your bowels and you're like, oh, that feels good? Yeah. I, I, I mean, <laughs> I so then. So, uh, <laughs> feels pretty good. <laughs> so then, so then the, the question is like good feelings is that the same as happiness like how does that work right uh, again i'm starting at a very shallow level like this is a very like, know, hey, what gives you like that? it's getting fucking deep <laughs> uh, i mean so for example my other example is like finding a five dollar bill like i get instantly happy but like it doesn't go beyond that you know i put it in my pocket it's great right <clears throat> so wait, so what are you asking again um little things that make you happy every day yeah yeah pretty much what are the little instant gratifications you get Right. Every day I watch the clock and I wait for it to turn 11 so that I could eat my lunch. But then Ooh. right when it turns 11, I'm like, how long can I fucking wait now? <laughs> it's like a fucking game. Wait, wait, I do oh. this every single day. Oh. Wait, oh, how about this one? You're about to pull up to a to an intersection and it turns green and, and you haven't braked yet. Oh, isn't that oh, a good that's feeling? Good. That's a pretty good feeling. And then you know it's gonna turn green, so you don't put on the brakes. Yeah, yeah. But if it doesn't, you're fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know it's. You going like to. hope to fly right by, right? You yeah. hope to just cruise right by. There's like a camera there too, but you're right at the speed limit. There's you have like no worries. There. Yeah, yeah. Thank God. I mean, these are like again, what like I say is like satisfaction. Yeah, it's like a very mm-hmm. shallow level. I guess yeah, it's closer to the satisfaction term than anything, right? Because you're satisfied with that, but it doesn't bring you anywhere further. Mm. Right. Uh, I mean, another one I get is like when I get a haircut. It just oh, it's yeah. just like a simple thing. It's like a twenty minute process, but it just feels twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Maybe like forty minutes for me. Yeah, but like it's a very instantaneous happiness, but it doesn't go very much beyond that, right? Actually, I'd beg to differ on that. I think oh, really? like a haircut, like if you have like a fresh haircut, like. I would say for like the next week or like week and a half, like I feel amazing. Like it's. Oh, I agree. Yeah, it's I mean like, for girls it's a bit different because you guys only get it like once every six months or something like that, right? So like oh, yeah. because of the frequency, it becomes uh, more enjoyable for you guys, right? Like for me, I get it every it's, month, uh, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, no, but, I get a haircut like maybe every th- like 
three weeks. Oh, uh, I mean, I'm happy that day I got it because it feels so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after that, it's like, okay, like life's just the same. Like it doesn't <laughs> affect me too much after that. Oh. oh, really? Yeah. Whenever I get my hair done, I like feel so vain because I swear I look at myself in the mirror more often. <laughs> I like I, your like, nails. feel myself. Yeah. <laughs> or like, yeah, when you get my nails done, I like look at them more often. I'm like, wow, I feel so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um. Okay. Then let's 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 dive deep into this question, right? So, um, I guess there are some types of happiness. Do you, do you guys want to start with that? So this is just the internet definition of of happiness. Oh, you want to dive into the definition? Uh yeah, yeah. You guys want to go through that? Well, uh, so random site verywellmind.com. Uh, just googled it. Just forms of happiness. So they consider there's seven types. There's love, contentment joy gratitude excitement pride and optimism right oh uh so the first one they say is the feeling of joy um so comes from losing yourself in the present moment and appreciating what you have wait so, so i'm curious like for these seven types like i don't know did you did you do any research on this or no? zero okay i was not prepared for that because i was gonna ask you like is there is there such is there a difference between like short-term happiness and long-term happiness i, I think there would happiness? be I, I mean or is like short-term happiness just like okay okay so let's go a little bit uh off the end and let's say like fuck all these definitions right now uh do you guys see a different from all the terms i just said so like joy love contentment optimism gratitude excitement and pride so like oh, shit. <laughs> so like from those seven of those that i just spoke of what do you do you feel like a difference w which ones do you feel are too similar or which ones do you feel are a lot different and i'll, I'll kind of start i'll feel like i think joy is a bit more um on the like lower end of my value as in like it's like more it's less deep. Yeah, yeah yeah exactly it's less deep um i think uh for me some of it like pride optimism and love i think are the more deeper ones for me i think those ones i uh, you need something a bit more like the haircut won't do to get me to those levels right. of, of happiness well okay so here here's my question right so like when i think of happiness like i think of happiness like very deep down inside but like don't you think like oh well, like just seeing the seven types of happiness i feel like yeah some of them are like very like minute things that we kind of just do like i don't know instinctively or like not instinctively but you know how everyone says like oh like you have to practice gratitude like if you want to be happy you have to practice gratitude but like gratitude is such a like very small thing and like just like what you said i don't think if i was like to be to practice gratitude that it would not get me like a deep 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 level of happiness just by doing like practicing gratitude right um but like in conjunction with other things i think it definitely does help elevate and help you see like like branch to the other forms of happiness so like when you practice gratitude then like maybe your mindset will become more optimistic which is another thing that's listed on here wait um, uh so I feel like this is always in like the psychology circle or shit or like when people talk about like mindfulness, they always talk about gratitude. I don't completely understand it because maybe I'm shitty at it, but also maybe because I'm at like a very, in my opinion, like a very high level of happiness all the time. So I don't know if there's like a difference. Like what, what do you guys feel about gratitude, that terminology? Well, so, okay. So this is actually, this is actually a very <laughs> funny topic. So first of all, like um, I was talking to, one of my very close friends like a, f a few weeks ago and um he, he was saying that his therapist said that you have to <laughs> you have to see like you have to feel like the highs and the lows of emotions in order to <laughs> right no go on in order to um like experience like certain feelings yeah so then um basically well, maybe like you think you're at a high level of happiness because like you just you're like like you hover around the median line yeah, yeah, and then so yeah. like if you're never like pissed off like I never actually see you like fucking like god fucking damn it like, <laughs> you know yeah. then like maybe like you just don't get those spikes so then like you're just kind of like at this flat level of like uh, whatever yeah. so then maybe like like I don't know this is just like I'm curious what do you think um i agree that so i think I've, I've said this before i think like i think i compare myself to viv i think viv feels a lot lower lows but a lot higher highs yes uh and then but for example for me my median's always in my opinion high ish yeah but then i may not feel 
as low or as high as someone like Viv because I feel like she her spikes. Yeah, and- yeah. Like she also like dives really deep into it, whereas I don't as much. Uh, so I definitely think that's a fact. But I think like I don't know. I think for ex- specifically gratitude, wouldn't that just be like feeling? That that'd be feeling grateful, right? For things like, oh, you know, I'm so happy I got a roof over my head, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, stuff like that, right? Yeah. So like what I think when I when I hear like practicing gratitude or talking about gratitude is like um yeah, being grateful for things that you normally you know, are just like expected, right? So like yeah. um so like in a relationship, I feel like there's a like I don't know, I get I like you kind of do things kind of just like normally right and then eventually like this thing that you know this person keeps doing for you becomes Uh like oh like it's just a normal thing you know like that's what you're supposed to do like you're expected to do it yeah right but then like eventually like down the line like you won't you won't be like necessarily consciously thinking oh i'm grateful for this right yeah yeah because like it's just happening over and over again and it's like like i'm grateful for this be like that would be practicing gratitude like actively consciously thinking Um, about like oh actually like yeah like i actually don't have it that bad or like um like i'm actually very grateful for like this to to be part of my life because like not everybody gets this you know i i actually think i i do the opposite when i practice gratitude whoa so when i think about it i'd be like i I talk to myself in my head i'm like hey dude you ain't shit okay You're, you're a normal fucking dude like, you should be happy for the things you have, you know. Think about the people in, like, you know, this random third world country, you know. Don't don't be such a prick about these things. Oh. Like, pretty much, I so kind of... are you a pessimist or are you an optimist then? I mean, I want to say pessimist, but it's almost like I like to sometimes keep my ego in check by doing that to myself. Right, so I feel like you're a pessimist. I, I don't know about that. I'm pretty, I'm pretty Ooh, optimistic about my life. I feel like the idea life. behind both of them are kind of the same, though. Because you're saying, like, mm-hmm. oh, what I have right now is better than what it could be. Right. Yeah, but then one one way of saying it is like, like I'm happy to have this because like I value it, and then like kind of what you're saying, like okay, I wouldn't say you're a pessimist, but like, like the way that you say it is like, oh my god, like I don't have it the worst, so like, like stop complaining, yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like, like it's like glass full versus glass half mm. empty. Like yours, yours would be like, yo, your glass ain't fucking empty, so like. Yeah, you know, like be grateful for the water you have. Whereas, like, oh, I don't know. Actually, the way that you see it is, oh, I have a glass half full. This is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, mean, I don't know, but I, I wouldn't say like overall, I'd be a pessimist. Like, yeah, it, I, yeah, it's yeah. kind of weird, like that. Like I, this is just like internally, like introspectively. That's how I would think because, like, sometimes I feel like, um, okay, sometimes I feel like other people complain a bit too much, right? Um, but then it's not fair if I always like judge other people without judging myself. So then sometimes I turn that on to myself. I'm like, like relative. Yeah. I'm like, okay, why are you complaining about this? You know, there's so many things that are happening to so many other people. Like why, like, why are you being a bitch about it? Right. Like that, that would be what I'd go through in my mind. And like, I guess it not necessarily is directly gratitude, but for me, that's how I think of yeah. it when I, when I think of that term. But again, I think that's one of my lower happiness levels i guess i think it's definitely important to practice gratitude though because like our star was saying a lot of things you could take for granted in life and not realize like how good you actually have it until it's kind of gone Mm -hmm. and then when you are active in practicing gratitude on a daily basis for the things that you do have and i feel like it kind of switches your perspective on those things and when you actually experience those things it brings you to like an like almost another level of like happiness. Yeah. Ooh. Like if I you had never reached there. Yeah, kind of like how like when my car was being maintenance for like three months, I was so appreciative to have my car back or just to have a car to be able to drive any time, yeah. any place. And if I even without having to lose my car, if I just actively realize that it's actually pretty great to have your own car to be able to drive everywhere you can then I, you would enjoy your car more every single time you drive your car you'd be like i love this freaking car and this is great so it just kind of elevates the whole experience for whatever you practice gratitude with i feel mm. or you could be appreciative that you have this friend and so when you hang out with your friends you're just more in the moment and you enjoy spending time with your friends more because you're just more grateful for that friendship that you have mm, i see even I see. before you have to like lose it or anything 
Yeah, I don't know. I, I think that's one of the ones that I don't understand the most. Of, of all the ones I listed here, that's probably one of the ones that I least understand. Have you tried practicing gratitude at all? Or like um, like journaling about, like I don't know, even just something very small, like saying one thing that you're like grateful for every day. And then like it's it's hard because like after a while, you're just like, fuck, like I, you really have to fucking think to mm. like dig down for something you know because yeah. like after you after you do it for a while it's like oh shit i fucking like literally just said this the other day and it's like then it really gets you to think like oh like what am i grateful for uh no i think i'm a bit selfish so i don't really think <laughs> of those things i think everything's pretty great and i think uh like sometimes if someone like does a favor for me and stuff i feel very appreciative i feel like that might be a bit of gratitude right you're like oh yeah that's very great but it's not a very regular thing and i don't know like some of the books i've been reading because i think like starting this year i tried to read some more books about mindfulness and stuff i think they keep talking about it but i just don't understand it um but yeah. well okay so how about this right like let's say let's say like the volleyball season ends right yeah. you have a break for like two weeks you don't play volleyball yeah and the first day back like how does how does that make you feel yeah and that's definitely like a that i do also attribute to gratitude but it's not like a daily thing it's like something like that happens um a non-regular occasion kind of thing right but then so then like um like so then i think an example of that would be like like when you go to play volleyball, you would be like, oh, like I'm actually grateful that like I'm healthy and I'm not injured and I'm able to play volleyball rather than like, you know. I feel like it would ruin the experience for me. Oh. Like I'm pretty, oh. uh, I pretty much enjoy volleyball right now. So there's no, uh, I don't know. I don't know if like thinking like that would change anything for me. Mm. Actually, okay. So there is one thing that is a bit regular. I'm actually pretty grateful that people are willing to come on the show. <laughs> <laughs> like who the fuck watches this show anyways i was like it was up to me i wouldn't so i was like i'm, I'm actually pretty grateful that i actually mm. have people that are willing to come here for like an hour and a half two nice. hours at least to just talk about random shit all day okay okay yeah Same. but yeah i don't know i've like of all the ones that's the one i oh, so if i would say that's the one i think of the least i think the top would probably be either pride or optimism for me oh i think pride's pride. one of the biggest one so we can dive super deep now, I oh, guess. Well, I, I was going to I I'm surprised because if I was to guess, I thought your, like, pride for you would be the lowest. No, because, no, no, no. It's, okay, so this is, thing? this is how I think of it. And I think a, a lot of people know, like, I like to not, like, inflate my ego too much. I like right. to really, like, beat it down and make sure it's not, like, over the top. But I think... It's um, pretty high still. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> I mean, it could, it could be worse, right? It could be mm -hmm. worse. But anyways, uh, so, okay, this is going to go into one of the questions that we're going we're gonna to talk about today, but what makes you the happiest and i actually thought about this for like two weeks like i just thought like okay what times makes me the happiest and it's not just like the highest of happiness but the, also the longest like sustain of happiness right so it's like it's both spectrum it's not just like a higher instant peak but also like a longer duration of happiness right and all of the stuff that makes me like ultra happy are stuff I've earned. And I feel like that's really associated to pride, right? When you've earned oh. something, it really feels like, you know, that's the pride. You can say like, hey, I'm prideful about this. This is my ego saying like, this is... That's so that, that, that's why I think that's why I think pride for me is very high because for example, like going back, earning my degree was very... I was very happy about that and it lasted me like very long because it was a very difficult thing to do. So for me, anything that's really difficult to obtain and I do obtain it, it makes me more happy. Like it, mm -hmm. it increases that level like substantially. Like you can attribute it to your efforts. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, so, so like if someone were to like give me something rather than if I earn something, the happiness level is like completely different. I see, I see. Right? So like I would love if someone would give me like a million dollars, right? But if I earned a million dollars and I knew how to earn that million dollars, the happiness I would gain from that million dollars compared to someone giving me a million dollars is like not even close. Like, yeah. like yeah. crazy amount. But then for me, um, especially for me, it happens like everywhere in life. Like, like every time I think of like the ultra joy. So like one of them, I don't know if I talked about in this podcast, but like the one time I went to Korea and I figured out how traveling works, I guess the first time I ever like had an oh fuck moment while you're traveling and then you like go through that. But like going through a difficult thing and like earning the right to say that I went through it because you actually did, it. then that made me feel even more happy, right? You, like, you know what? You know what this reminds me of? You know that quote um, 
that quote that like a lot of people say it's not about the journey or it's not about the destination it's about the journey yeah that, i feel like that like it's that's what comes to my mind when you say that like yeah it's it's not really like where you end up or like whether you conquered the goal or not but it's like everything leading up to it and like all your hard work and all the like time you put in and the effort yeah it's like like actually just going through that and like overcoming it i feel like is what you get most happiness or whatever pride value yeah from. like if the journey wasn't so difficult then i wouldn't value it as much right yeah. so like yeah i guess going deeper like in life what would make me the happiest is like identifying the things i want to become and then actually achieving those and the longer it takes which i think some of the things i want to become will take my whole life to become will be how i become the happiest also interesting but then i also think again everything i thought of for me that makes me the happiest is related to earning and that's why i think it's more so pride because it's like that's a good point it's almost like um i forgot how to say it. it's like it's, it's it's almost like i've joined a club that i achieve something that's very difficult right it's like it's like going through navy seals or something like you've done something so difficult that's what makes you so much more happy right so I don't know. And I think that's also associated to why I like to do difficult things or like to try like new and difficult hobbies. And if it's too easy, it just doesn't, it just doesn't interest me because right. The happiness I get from it is a lot lower. Yeah. I also think, um, well, like looking at these types of happiness, right. I think there's only maybe two or maybe three of them that are like, in my opinion, like long term kind of like you earned it kind of, happiness like pride optim optimism and love i yeah. feel like those three for sure yeah those are the exact three i was gonna say is like that's why those are the highest for me because mm -hmm. i think those are the hardest to earn or, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah so then like excitement gratitude joy contentment that's listed up there i feel like are very like more short-term kind of like like let me just add a little bit more fuel to some you know, get you going some and, like, like instant gratification stuff right that yeah but also like um things that help you to kind of like maybe sustain your happiness a little bit longer right. too because like like after you earn something and like yeah you know you're proud of it or whatever like then what right yeah like then you're on to the next milestone right yeah so yeah. like eventually like some of like the things that in the past where you were like oh my god like that was one of my most proudest accomplishments or whatever i feel like eventually like as you start to conquer more and more those kind of like fade away and like seem less significant and you're onto the next one and onto the next one whatever but like like i think practicing some of the other ones help like sustain it and also help like keep you rooted and grounded to like understand you know like oh shit you know like that was where i started kind yeah. of thing you know what i mean yeah it, like it, it gets you over the humps I think the perfect example of that would be working out yeah yeah where you reach prs you reach your goals and then but then you constantly have to keep practicing that same thing you keep getting challenged and then because you're challenged at a new height but because you're at that height it kind of shows like where you've come from and what obstacles you've had to go through what prs you've had to go through but then you're still challenged and you still get that like instant joy or instant gratification and that like hit yeah yeah i agree I, yeah i think physical activity is one of the like the it's like dual like you can treat it as two things like you get the instant gratification like uh physically so like like there's a physiological way of getting the happiness like mm -hmm. serotonin and all that stuff and then there's a the long-term one because when you actually see that you've reached goals either physique or weight wise then you feel even like greater joy right well for me like um yeah physique physique and um you know like feeling bigger or whatever lifting heavier like is gratification for me but like do you ever sometimes you wake up and like you just feel so like invigorated like very like happy healthy um like i don't know some days i wake up and like my back fucking hurts like shit you know <laughs> like you know i feel like i don't know my face or my hair like just feels like it's like you know very unhealthy like my hair like i don't know maybe i wake up greasy or like my face feels like it's you know like not like you know when you first wash your face like you very, feel very refreshed right mm -hmm. some days I, f I wake up and i'm like holy shit like i feel absolutely invigorated and like refreshed and i just want to like take on the world right and then some days you feel you wake up and you're just like dude like i just want to like i don't even want to wake up right mm. and so like i think part of working out and part of like staying healthy eating healthy um is very like intrinsic like it's very like it makes you feel good inside and 
you know, like some days, like I, you know, it, for me, like I don't even need to like look big or like, you know, um, like look a certain way, but like working out, I feel like it helps you get that like inside feeling of like feeling like you're very, um, yeah. Like I keep saying invigorated, but yeah, like, like in tune with your body. Yeah. Like, like you're in control of like, you know, like you're working at like your absolute peak or like you're able to, to do that, you know? I know how you feel. Um, I feel like I get that feeling on days when you have a really good workout at night and it's like summertime. You wake up the next day and it's like nice as fuck outside and you wake up early for a workout. That feeling is exactly what I think you're talking about. I, I just think when you get enough sleep, it feels great. <laughs> when I don't get enough sleep, it feels like shit in the morning. But do you ever get do you ever get enough sleep and feel like shit still? Uh, very oh. rarely. Yes. Oh, really? But very, very rarely. Like almost never. Because like some days, some days like I will wake up with maybe three or four hours of sleep and I will feel absolutely like impeccable. So. Mm. You're lying to yourself, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. So like when I slept enough. Okay. So if I oversleep, I feel like shit. But I think that's the same yeah, with everyone. Yeah, that is normal. Yeah. If I've slept enough and didn't feel good, this happens maybe once or twice a year. And I think it happens very like deep into winter, like the the darkest days of winter is usually when that happens. So do you think, do you think it's, well, like obviously like sleep, I would agree is like some degree of relation to this. Right. And probably like a very high degree of relation, but what what else do you think is, is like that causes that though? Uh, seasonal, whatever depression, seasonal. Sad. Whatever. Yeah. That, that one. Uh, there's just what? less less sunlight. <laughs> what is it? It's a seasonal something. It's when there's less sunlight. Um, yeah. your body naturally because seasonal affective, affective disorder. disorder. Yeah. In the winter months, you usually feel a little bit more sad and a little yeah. bit more depressed it's because very, you get exposed to less sun. Yeah. Is it vitamin D related or just? No, I think it's whatever the sun gives you. I mean, it's giving you the D, so <laughs> I guess I don't know. So like in, I think they had a thing in Europe. In Europe, it's like winter is similar to here there's dark days and stuff like that and spring they just go all out they just fuck all day and they just go hard like no joke like that's actually one of the things they do i'm gonna go to london in spring. no well not there but <laughs> yeah no i think it was in like especially in the nordic regions where it's like like very similar here where it's like 4 p.m it's like dark out already mm -hmm. and then in the spring they just feel like a crazy amount of joy and i feel like having that um fluctuation actually helps a lot too i can feel the difference like it? a lot you like have, significantly you have the solar power in you yeah as like the seasons change like i feel like i'm a, almost like a completely different not completely different person but like i can feel a significant difference in my mood and the energy that i have every single day when like it gets warmer out versus when it gets mm, yes, colder and darker I, out i i do agree as well um have you tried taking like vitamin d at all like, in every the like day. regularly I every oh, really? day. yeah yeah yeah. I, I haven't taken it regularly. Oh, you're do you, gonna die. Do you yeah, feel yeah. it? You have to take different? it. <laughs> two two thousand IUs a day minimum. Do you think it like helps? No, I mean oh, okay. for happiness, no, but for your health, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, like uh, similar to what you're seeing, like springtime. Okay, here's here's one that I've, I've always loved. Springtime around um, late March, early April, maybe. Uh, you get off class early, university, and you go home. It's bright out. It's nice and warm. And you just go home. And you just feel so great. Yeah, and you're, you're like, you just feel like you have all the time in the world yeah. to do whatever the yeah. fuck. Yeah. yeah, days are getting longer. Everything feels amazing. Yeah. yeah, But the reverse is true. November time, you know, you know the days are getting shittier. You're in fucking school for like 13 hours a day. Season. Yeah, you're it's depressed as hell. Cold as shit. You can't go outside. The people killing themselves in hub happens all the Dark, time. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. It's dark as shit. Like I'm I, telling you, the season affects a lot. I think it was two days ago when it was colder. It was like 16, 18 degrees. That day I was like, fuck. Life sucks. <laughs> I woke up and I was just like, fuck. Well, Summer's over. I hate this shit. Yeah, even right now, like driving to work, like my windows are already a little fogged in the morning because of the... Yeah. Of, it's like, ah, oh, this feels shitty. But I genuinely feel so much more But okay, so now. this is kind of weird too because I think this is maybe naturally built into me now, but I feel like going through winter is like the tough shit so I can earn my summer. But our winter's are eight months long. <laughs> I, know, I don't know I if know. it's that worth it. But okay, so here's, here's the reverse if you think about it. So what if you lived and... 
I think I know what you're going to say, but what if you lived in LA? So like, you'd be nice all the time every day, but then you wouldn't have that like seasonal change. Like it's actually kind of nice having seasons. It is nice having seasons, but I think eight months of winter is. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's excessive. Day. We definitely yeah. got to go to like Calgary or Montana or something. So just somewhere a little bit more south. Yeah. So, uh, I, okay. So this got me thinking, right? Because um, you guys like shit. You guys are like literally just shitting on winter. Like some days, I feel like, you know, when I wake up, and this is like back in the like I don't know, uh, back in the day when I used to work out really early in the morning, like five six a.m. Right. And like when I wake up, and I go out, even in the winter time, it's just like it's very like serene. I feel like, you know, there's nothing going on. Oh. You're kind of awake when nobody else is awake, right? Mm. And it feels very very similar to like when you wake up and you go outside in the summertime and you know like maybe you're done school and like like that kind of feeling and i feel like that i attribute that to like just not feeling rushed at all to do anything or like feeling like mm. you have a lot of time because like i feel like the one feeling that i hate the most is like when you're scrambling to like you know make it on time to do something or like you're late or like whatever it's like oh fuck like this feels so shitty right and so i think like in the winter time when i used to wake up really early in the morning and i used to go like just take a really deep breath before i get into my car and i'm just like like oh this feels so good because like like nothing's going on it's very calm it's very peaceful it's like sitting in the ocean right and like there's just nothing around you nothing to worry about and it's just you like getting what you need to get done and i feel like that makes me like like really happy but also like just I attribute that specifically to like just not feeling rushed to like do Whoa. things. Would I, I feel like that'd be more of like a like a peacefulness, right? Like it's almost like you need that bit of alone time or like I don't know, like where there's that's, nothing n- not a care in the world, right? Mm-hmm. Like you just Yeah. But would you not attribute that like w- would you consider that happiness or like Yeah. I mean it, I think what I was saying before about the seasons is that the season affects your general happiness, but you can still spike even if it's like the winter and stuff like that. Yeah, right? yeah. And I do think that that peacefulness is a requirement that people don't uh, think about that much. Like it's almost like when I was a kid going camping and you just walk outside and there's nothing around and it just feels like, whoa, like, yeah, right? I'm the only thing conscious right now in this area. It just feels feels pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I wouldn't put that as like a super high level of happiness. I feel like it's very uh, short lived for me, but that, it could be different for different people. That actually kind of like clicked something in me. I realized like lately that for the last like year, I've been keeping myself really busy. And then whenever I take time to make sure that I'm not busy, I actually feel significantly happier. And like a lot of the times I find myself like it feels good when I just sit in my car and I do nothing. I think that's exactly what you're saying. And I didn't connect the dots until now, which is insane. Because, like, I I would drive early to go to places just so I could sit in my car and not do anything. But then I'll know that I'm at least there or that I'm, like, done, whatever I'm done doing. And I'll sit in my car for, like, an hour, half an hour. And it feels so much more better. But, like, now that you've put it into words, holy shit. Like, that Here's, really clicks. Here, like, here. I'm so excited for this weekend because I blocked it out so that I could do nothing. Oh, couch potato. And I'm so fucking excited. I mean, okay, so, like, that same thought. This is here. This is how my mind would think about it, right? Okay, so if you went through a really busy day, uh, you're rushed, you have a lot of shit going on. At the end of the day, I would actually feel happy because I was like, I got through it, right? This was one of the harder days of, of, of the week. I, I got through it. I'm, I'm feeling great. And then the days that aren't as busy... I would think back to the day I was really busy and I say, I earned this one. I earned this day Mm. because of that day. Therefore, I also feel happy. So then I don't know. I always find ways of like always elevating that to myself Mm. or like, like that's like your version of gratitude. Yeah, 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 I think so too. But uh, yeah, so like that's how it kind of keeps me up a lot. And like going through hard days, I want to go through that because it'll make me feel happier after. And then I feel like most People or guys, we all do things so we can end up doing nothing, if that makes sense. So, like, why do you do all these chores so you can do nothing later? Yeah. Or, like, why do you do all this? Why why, why do you work so hard right now? Okay, so I can make so much money so I can retire and do nothing later. It always ends <laughs> up doing nothing, and then we get bored and we have to find something to do. Or it's, like, <laughs> not even doing nothing, but, like, doing 
like something that you genuinely enjoy. enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And that could not that could be nothing. That could be something. That could be like because a lot of people retire and like they could literally do nothing, but they are like, oh fuck, I gotta find something to keep me busy. You know, I gotta find something that like yeah keeps this like spark in me. Mm-hmm. I I think that also brings into my mind like two different types of happiness too. So like, for example, when I play a game of Dota two like a video game or whatever after i'm done that win or lose during the moment you feel happy when you play video games yeah but you feel shitty afterwards afterwards yeah when i'm studying a textbook i feel pretty shitty while i'm doing it but afterwards i feel like way better and i feel like that like very obviously shows like two different types of happiness in my uh-huh. opinion so i i th- okay so i think this kind of relates to that um whatever fucking newton's law or whatever the for every reaction, there's an opposite and equal, equal reaction. reaction? Okay, Is that yeah. Newton's law? Yeah, yeah, that's one of them. <laughs> so it's like, okay, so if if you just had like fucking three hours of fun yeah. or whatever, in the moment you're you're having like, like you get happiness or you get pleasure, satisfaction from that moment. But because now like you spent all that time feeling happy now like this bar is like raised and now the opposite reaction is happening where it's like your body has felt this like joy and this happiness for like this amount of time so now your body has to like return an equal reaction to be like okay now like you have to feel some sort of like Mm. crash or downfall and that's what i'm saying about like the highs and the lows is like it it clicked to me when like x person yeah told me about this because i'm like oh fuck like yeah like when you feel that low like then like relative like whatever your relative median bar is of like yeah happiness or whatever that obviously fluctuates but when you feel that low compared to like you know whatever your highs are like that's when you're able to kind of like stay grounded or like feel like the highs and lows and just really put into perspective like what you feel right so that's why also when you study it's like fuck you just put yourself through all this hardship and then now your body's like Mm. you know like you gotta like it's gonna make you feel good about yeah about it also changes like the severity because like i feel like okay people especially in university right after they go through a hard study session like going out to eat is the best thing ever and like oh, the yeah. reason why yeah. is because like almost anything at that point other than studying would be the best thing ever because yeah. you went through all that shit but i also feel like for me personally when i go through all that shit it's very difficult at the time but then I feel very grateful afterwards that I did go through that. Like everything for me is about earning something, right? So like when I do something that I feel like I've earned something, it always makes like amplifies my my version of happiness beyond. But yeah, that's that's I guess the short of it, the deepest versions of happiness that I get is usually that yeah. deep pride I, earning type of thing. I, I think I think I, I agree like with what you're saying too because like I, I do notice like if I can attribute like my efforts or like that I was able to contribute towards you know achieving x y or z it makes me feel a lot better than yeah like you said if something was just like kind of put on a silver platter and like handed to me kind of thing right same thing in volleyball right like the the best example is like like if I fucking like hustled for a fucking ball and like I got it up and then our team like scored from it like obviously like to me that is like way better than like like maybe like I'm just standing in the right spot and some dude like mashes a ball extremely hard at me and like it gets up right yeah. like to me those digs is like oh okay yeah like I fucking dug a fucking hard ass shot but it's like I can attribute less of my like skill or like my um contribution towards it right you know what i mean yeah yeah i think that's why um access services is how i show love because Mm. when you put so much effort into doing something for someone and you like plan it or you do a lot of stuff it's not even like their reaction alone but just doing it for them gives you so much happiness back and fulfillment right? yeah and fulfillment back I, i so i think for me it ties back to the pride thing so like when I um, it's like I pride myself in making this package yeah. for you, kind of thing. I pride myself in making love. Oh, <laughs> oh god! No, no, no! It's uh, it's pretty much like the relationship I'm in is, and how happy I am in my relationship, and how much love I show, and how much love I receive, is all a cause and effect of how much effort I personally also put in. Yes. So it's almost like I've 
not like not like hey so like i i wouldn't say it's my right it's not my birthright to have anything but i've earned the love that i've received and my partner has earned the love that i give because of what we do for each other or how we make each other feel and stuff so that's Mm -hmm. why i find that even that is still like everything for some reason for me always ties back to pride which like i said i don't enjoy because i don't want to be an egotistic person but i think naturally that's who i am and that's how it gives me joy how would you separate that from love for the seven types of happiness i actually like i can and cannot because i think they're very closely tied but like uh i think sometimes love like a part of love is what i've explained that i have to earn but a part of love is like natural like I, just love makes you happy type of thing yeah yeah like i i wouldn't know how to explain like uh my partner wouldn't have to do anything for me but i would still like love them there, there's no earning no pride portion of that in that part of it right like and that's oh, a see. portion of that relationship right and the other portion is me like working hard at it right and Working hard at like a relationship is very confusing sometimes because it's like, what do you do? Well, like you it's have to unconditional, right? Sometimes. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I wouldn't say unconditional, but I would say it's very confusing because sometimes to love someone, you have to love yourself more. Like you have to be very selfish. So you have to think about your self improvement in order to know how to love them more. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. So like you have to think of it like we're a team. I'm going to better myself so we can better the team. Mm-hmm. Right. But then that, it allows myself. you to elevate how you better them yeah exactly oh, yeah. exactly right so then it's a bit selfish in my mind but it's also for a good reason right for the greater good um but yeah that's that's how like a portion of the love would be like very natural very like non-conscious and then mm-hmm. the rest of it i think is about like hard work effort um like for me i'm a very non-empathetic person so it's a very it's like a lot of effort like i have to actively think like why does someone feel that way and then like really try to like put myself in their shoes and be like okay like this is why so you shouldn't be so like frustrated at them like they're trying their best or like like something like that right like that's how like i would have to think about it because i'm not a very naturally em- em- empathetic person right i do think a lot of the return that you get from love is equal or a part of the love that you get back is from the effort that you put in and all the work that you put in like exactly what you said some portion of it is like natural just comes easy but i think the biggest return that you get and the deepest like gratification that you can get from love is from like working on it and putting effort actually into it well that's i think that's also why you know like conflict is like necessary or like arguments and conflicts and like the tough conversations is necessary for love to kind of like be sustained or like flourishes because like like if you're just in quote unquote a perfect relationship where like you never argue whatever then like are you really growing like is your like you it may be like perfect right now but like are you really going anywhere from there right it's like you're just stagnant right and then so like as time goes on it's like oh it's the same fucking relationship still right Mm -hmm. like are you really going anywhere else from where you started yeah Yeah. i I think it's tough i think bringing up those topics is like very difficult I feel like I have like a routine like every two or three months I bring up something that I don't really want to talk about but I'm like ah, I feel like I gotta fucking talk about this <laughs> you have like, like a it, list and you're like alright it's the last day of the month yeah. Joyce I hate your fucking pants <laughs> it's like a fucking shit list I bring up I'm like yeah. hey we're gonna talk about this one nah, it's just for me usually it's just whatever comes to my mind that kind of like like for like it's kind of weird because it, it bothers me um, but because of that I want to talk to her about it more because I yeah. was like, yeah. she has to know about it because it bothers me and there's no reason of like hiding any of this, right? Well, okay, so this is like, I this thought kind of came across to me like a few months ago. It's like, okay, you know what? Like, you know, when you're in a relationship and like something is like bothering you or whatever, right? Sometimes um, like it doesn't, it's like, okay, it's like insignificant or maybe like it's insignificant at the time, right? And it's like, oh, whatever, like, like it's not really something that always happens. Like, we'll just let it go. And then it's like, oh, it happened again it's like should i have the conversation now or Mm -hmm. like is it just you know like a infrequent or like non i don't know like like there's no pattern to like a a consistent pattern to like oh it's like consistently happening that we need to have this conversation and then maybe like eventually like it just becomes like something that's like bothered you you know over like x amount of months or weeks or whatever and it's like okay like now 
<clears throat> now's the time we should talk about this. Yeah, like, well, that shit kind of brews resentment, right? Yeah. Over time, if you leave it too long. It so then, like, so then, I'm curious to hear, like, what your, what your, like, theory is on, like, when you should have those conversations. Like, do you have it, like, right away? Or do you have it, like, when it starts to become more consistent? Or, like, uh, From my experience, never right away. Uh, <laughs> usually when they're doing something that, I don't like or whatever it's maybe at that time they're a bit more like in an emotional state um and that might not be the best time right Right. like you might get some truths from that emotional state but those are unfiltered truths that may not be uh conducive to growth right but usually a little bit time after when both parties have like time to like reason with what they're feeling and reflect on it. Yeah. And then that's the best time to talk about it, In my opinion, usually like right at the I moment, agree. like for me, right at the moment, I can talk about anything. <laughs> I, I, I can do it, but I know from my past experiences, girls are not the same. Yeah. Um, and not just girls, just people aren't the same. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so even though I can do it, doesn't mean I should do it and doesn't mean other people should do it. But also like, I think, um like just being able to reflect on it right like taking some time to just think and reflect on it helps kind of like unbias it a little bit and like take the like emotional side out of it and make it more like logical i guess yeah well i i think it also works both ways because there's times where like i did something at the time that i thought was right and then i think about it and it happens more often now than when I was younger. I think when I was younger, I was a bit more hot headed and a bit more e- egotistic. But now it happens a bit more where I'm like, think back. I'm like, fuck, I was wrong. Like that was hundred <laughs> percent me, not that person's fault at all. Like I was just in the emotional state. Right. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That's, that's growing. I think at least. I definitely think that if you feel like you have an issue with someone or something, if you want some if you want the relationship to be good then you should try and clear as much gray areas as possible Mm. and even if it's something insignificant or small it may be like annoying like some people may say like you need to pick your battles pick and choose your battles but i think that if a person cares about you enough then they'll want to hear about these small little insignificant things because it shouldn't be that hard to adjust or just hear you out for these things right and then it'll just clear up all the stuff that you would otherwise have under the rug yeah and it's like almost like you bring it up and then like maybe you thought you were right and that or whatever and it's like oh actually like i didn't even get to hear their side of like maybe why they're doing it that way and then you know that maybe like brings up a different point to be like oh actually i didn't think of that yeah i think most small things require most small things or even big things in general when if you're talking about like conflict with somebody that you have like a relationship with or a friend you're friends with you just need reassurance of some sort like pretty much everything is reassurance yeah or like yeah understanding like why or like their intention behind why they did yeah i mean sometimes you are wrong true <laughs> yeah you, <laughs> you just gotta tell wrong. them as it, as it is right? no people are always wrong jorge <laughs> i'm always right. i'm usually right <laughs> i mean there's certain things i pride myself on some things one of them is like this is a weird one. Uh, directions. I think I'm very good at directions. Mm-hmm. So when someone tells me otherwise, I'm like, shut the fuck up, man. I already remember this like it's <laughs> like fucking Google Maps, okay? Um, um, do you know how to get to my house without directions? Yeah, pretty much, I yeah. think. I mean, Somebody did that that one time they were driving me when I was late. I was very impressed. Is it you? Is it you? Probably I mean, me. I remember there's a silver something road oh. and I just have to hit up 66 and then I get to that road and I'm good to go. Oh, shit. You just exposed my address. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you live close to there. That's not the exact streets and stuff. Oh, true. But yeah, um, that's pretty cool. Uh, wait, so okay, Viv, I kind of explained like my, that's how I define my happiness. Or okay, my largest, greatest happiness comes from my pride. Mm-hmm. Or it, would it be the same for you or is it different? Like, what do you think? Wait, bef- before we go on, can I, can I see what this thing says is the definition of pride? Because like, before you you explain what pride was like i think i thought i had a very different definition of pride. all right here, I'm curious what this is let me just read out while smug or competitive pride can be a negative thing feelings of private in your accom- in your accomplishments can be a form of gratitude toward inward or turned inward and are a great form of happiness to indulge in you can take pride in your work and your family your home and yourself and in anything you put effort care and love into so i think it's very similar yeah. to what i was kind yeah, of explaining. exactly what exactly you were yeah, yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, that's kind of like 
for me, that's if I can only restrict myself to these seven things, which you guys don't have to. What I, does love say? I would What's think the it's the biggest. <clears throat> All right. You want, you want me to open the hub? Uh, love and happiness are sometimes said to be interchangeable. That love is an infinite source of happiness and happiness itself is a form of love. However you look at it, both are vital to have in your life. True love is fabled to be extremely difficult. Okay, this doesn't really explain much. Family, friends, romantic partners, and even pets can all be sources of love and focusing on all of these relationships can greatly enrich your life. Maybe it's more so about the relationship. Um, Like, for example, a part of my earning part would be with the relationship, but not like a majority. Like, I have greater joy from other stuff or happiness i guess okay i'm not exactly sure about the exact definitions everything but i want to say pride in love pride because of you how you explained it to me and i feel like i take a lot of pride in the effort that i put into like the friendships and relationships that i have with people and how i nurture them and how i like the effort that I put into them and the, I guess, the authenticity that I put into them and the work that I put into making myself happy. So, like, mm-hmm. I'm very prideful of all the effort that I put into making sure that like, my mental state is okay, like journaling or going to a therapist or doing things to consistently make sure that, like, my life has little things to for it to be happy that right. I feel like I'm actually very prideful for, like, I have a photo, I have an album in my phone called the How to Be Happy Archives. And every single time I feel happy and really in the moment, I'll take a picture of like my POV and yeah, and put it in that folder. But with one rule that taking a photo does not take away from the moment because then they'll just take away from the meaning of the folder. Or I'll do things like like chase sunsets, like I mentioned in the last podcast where I'll just drive until i find a nice place to view the sunset i'll sit there alone and just sit down and take an hour out of my life to just enjoy things so i would say like i'm very prideful in how much effort i put into making sure that my life is enriched in these ways and making sure that like the things that i do put effort in i put like my 110 percent effort in mm. and for love i feel like that would be my next one because i love being around people and i get a whole bunch of enjoyment of seeing the people that I love be happy which is why I would say like my my love language that I give out would be acts of service because I just really like seeing the people that I love be happy and if I'm I could be just like sitting in a corner of a room and everyone and everyone that I love could just be like having a blast doing whatever they love and that would fill my meter up completely your single tear in the corner (laughs) no I would be like absolutely joyful like i would if i could support everyone in my life financially in every single way i absolutely would because that would just make me happy even if i had to take like the lowest cut of pay i would be 100 percent okay with that because i think that like like if i was rich as fuck there's no reason for me to be rich as fuck if i see all my friends and family still working i'd rather like take a pay cut and put myself lower so that everyone else can like come up with me then that would feel like even better so i would definitely say like love and pride would be my top ones well of we, those know, reasons. we know how the jv show income is split <laughs> I don't mind i bear all the costs <laughs> <laughs> i have the 100 percent cut <laughs> uh, how, how about you yeah you, how are, you star? are star i mean yeah. ho- hold up before you start that's kind of a Copy my homework, but not not complete. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, mean, I'm just kidding. Yours is actually significantly different. Mine. Mine is a very uh more self related. But yeah, it's it's very hard. I think uh, for me, I would say yeah, pride, love, optimism. Um, but like from where I was like as a kid, like when I was young, versus like now, I feel like that has like like my perspective on this has like changed so much. Um, but yeah like pride love hap- optimism i think are the three for me and it's very similar to like what both of you guys said i think like everybody just has like this deep rooted like feeling of being able to just like accomplish something or like when you feel like you've contributed towards something and actually like basically like executing on it right it gives a huge sense of 
like you said, pride, and that ultimately brings happiness. Um, but like, yeah, I it, for me, like, I think those are the big ones um, for me in terms of like core happiness. But in in terms of like sustained happiness, I would say, yeah, optimism and gratitude is what would help me. What helps me sustain happiness. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, you know, like when you when you you know work on trying to chase a milestone or like um finish a project or like do this um whatever accomplishment that you're going for right like leading up to it like you know what you want you have a vision you have a direction and you go for it and then while you're like going there like when you see progress you're happy and you're prideful and you're like yo this fills my meter like like this is this is like keeping me going right once you hit that milestone it's like oh like what do i do now right and or like like once you get there like that is becomes maybe like the new normal of like oh like this is like my baseline now so then like where do you go from there you said another milestone right but i think like in the end like the higher you go the harder you fall you know is what they say and i think it is like true to an extent unless you're able to kind of like stay grounded and be appreciative and humble for like the things that helped you get there Mm -hmm. and that's kind of like how you should sustain happiness and so i think like it's very hard for me to pick like just one or two but i think the the big core ones is what you guys said love and pride for sure and then i think optimism and um gratitude is kind of like what will also help kind of sustain like the levels of happiness and keep you kind of content and um be willing to kind of like you know put in more of the hard work to kind of get where you want to be you can see what you mean by how um gratitude helps sustain that happiness when you're ch- constantly chasing a goal and then when you reach that goal you kind of want to go for the next one and the next one because i feel like a lot of people have sort of like a shallow or a false sense of happiness when they are constantly trying to chase like the next bigger thing like if you do it if you compare it to someone wanting to always get the like newer brand of a car newer or newer model of a car you want the nicer one and then the next one and next model and the next model then you'll never actually be satisfied with the car that you have or like the bag that you have because you just want the one that's current right and if you're not grateful for that then that feeling actually is like you're just chasing like something that's not attainable right? yeah exactly or sustainable mm-hmm. I, I actually think a portion of my like continued happiness is um optimism also so it's like it's kind of weird so like i love this echo chamber <laughs> <laughs> well no 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 this, no my sustained happiness mm-hmm. so he was saying that's his core one right and oh. his sustained one was was gratitude right i actually think my the for me it's optimism because optimism is a for me, like a plan, right? So when I go through tough shit, like working out, like, oh, fuck, I, I can't tell you how many times I've like driven to the gym and I just sit in my car for like a good minute. I'm like, fuck, I don't want to do this today. But then I just go and do it, right? But all of that, like all the shit, I, all the hard shit I do is all from optimism because I feel like I have a plan and I need to do this in order to get to the next level and I have to do it day in, day out until I can get there. And I think that's all part of the optimism portion of it, right? It's almost like the pride is earning the thing. The optimism is what drives me to the pride. I heard a lot of really good quotes and a lot of advice that I've followed recently from a lot of close friends. And one thing that ties into your optimism thing is that one of our friends, Gabe, told me to just have a little faith sometimes in life, like no matter how hard things get. And that's something I repeat to myself sometimes. And I think that's ties into your optimism thing. And I think it's oh. pretty great. I mean, I always think about what's the worst that can happen. I'm like, oh, fuck, yeah, I can do it then. <laughs> I mean, I, I think I, that's, <laughs> that's the ultimate one. Like, I always tell people, I like, and I always have to remind myself of this. It's like, when you have a hard decision coming up, what's the worst that can happen? You think of the worst scenario, and if the worst scenario isn't that bad, then every other scenario can only be better. If you think the worst scenario is pretty bad. <laughs> then maybe you shouldn't do it, right? Maybe you shouldn't jump off of that plane, right? Oh, okay. But maybe you have to. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, that's how I kind of treat it. Let's uh, let's okay, let's go back to something more concrete. So we've been th- talking about a lot of very like um, high level, very like um, thought like things. Let's go to some concrete stuff. So like, like what makes? How do you sustain your happiness throughout your day? What are some of the things you do? Right, and I think we already touched base on one of them. So let's not go with full echo chamber. We don't have to talk about like workout. We all have said this many times in the podcast. Working out is great. It makes you feel super happy after. 
let's go outside of that. What are some other stuff that you kind of do that on a daily basis, weekly basis or monthly basis kind of help you? And what I mean, something more concrete is like, I don't like to just give a lot of like high level thought stuff to our guests. We like want to yeah, yeah. Let's let's talk about something more concrete. Like like what is it you do, right? So like um one of them I can say is like I fucking follow a meal plan and that actually kinda makes me pretty happy because I don't have to think about like cooking during the week, right? It's like mm-hmm. a very set thing, something I don't have to think about that like pretty much um thinking about it creates an unhappiness that I've removed from my life mm-hmm. by doing this whole meal plan. So like all that unhappiness comes in a short duration, it's more efficient. I cook it all at once or if I figure it all at once, so then throughout the week I'm like I've removed this shitty part of it, right? So like Either or something that makes you happy or something that is unhappy that you've removed from your life. Like what are some of the things that you guys have done? I feel like I have quite a solid plan or a thing in place to make sure that I'm constantly happy or that I to induce happiness. And like one of them is what I mentioned earlier, and it's the photo album thing where I take the photos and I put it in and then I reflect on it. Another one that I started doing recently in the last three months so that I started taking videos of these moments. Oh, wow. <laughs> Don't copy my homework, friend. No, I'll take little videos and snippets of these moments. And it's actually not that hard as I thought it would be because I just turn on like the live motion part of my photos. So then I'll take a photo. So I'll have a photo. And then I'll have like the video portion. It's a little bit different, like the rules for these two things. So the, I'll take a photo when I feel genuinely present in the moment and like i'm not thinking about anything else like this is true happiness like i'm very happy to be here i'm not thinking about what's going to happen in an hour i'm not thinking about how yesterday went i just really enjoy this core moment and that's like pure happiness and that's what goes into the folder but when i'm just having fun it's a moment i want to remember this is a good day then i'll take like a video and then i'll compile all these little short videos and at the end of the month i'll put it into like this month recap thing and i'll make it into a tiktok (laughs) but like looking back on the tiktoks and the pictures in the folder they give me different kinds of happiness so like i feel like i'm someone who maybe is naturally a little bit more pessimistic so i forget the good moments really easily so that's why i think it's very a very good practice of me to constantly remind myself of the good times which is why i like take a lot of photos and if I want to remember like times when I genuinely felt good to my core, then I'll look at the photos. And if I want times to rem- remind myself like, hey, this week wasn't actually as shitty as you think it was, then I'll go look back at like those videos. And it's helped so much. And I feel genuinely like a lot more happier on a regular basis. Or like after I work out, I'll take a walk around the gym or I'll park really far so that I can like walk to my car without headphones on. And I feel like that little span of time when i'm just doing nothing or just like after you work out you're really sweating that fresh air feels so fucking good that makes me so happy it feels like a nice little like moment to myself yeah Yeah. i i get i get exactly what you're saying i feel like uh for me it's very similar um to like the last part of what you said um so one part of it is like being able to minimize like what I know is like maybe detrimental or like not good practice. So like on some days when I'm like, oh, you know, like I didn't scroll on TikTok for like an hour or two hours, whatever. I'd be like, oh, you know, like that actually like <laughs> makes me happy, you know, um, you should see my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so then but then um, like I think for me, like being able to kind of like know and trust the process in a lot of the things makes me happy so like so a couple things like one like on days where like i actually am able to put aside time to do like um like tendon strengthening exercises like for me like i i don't see benefits like necessarily right away from like doing that kind of stuff but it's just like oh like maybe to me it's like placebo and it's like oh maybe this literally does fuck all for your injury prevention right but like like for me being able to trust the process and like know that it's kind of like leading towards like my bigger goal of I don't know whatever it is that I'm trying to achieve I'd be like okay you know what like it feels good to like know that you know I actually actively did this like for me injury prevention like is such a big part of like 
what I think is important in like sports or ath- uh, athleticism or like, uh, um, you know, being healthy or whatever. But it's like you don't know it's working until you know it doesn't work kind of thing. Right. Mm. So it's like part of that is like. For me, it's like, OK, you know, when you do like tendon strengthening exercise, you don't know it's actually working. Right. It's like no news is good news kind of thing. So I don't know. It's hard for me to explain. But yeah, doing like knowing that I did something and I'm trusting the process and like having faith that it's like contributing that makes me feel happy. And then the second thing that makes me feel happy on a day to day basis is like when I'm able to kind of like check things off for like the smaller goals or the smaller things that lead up to my bigger goal. So like if I like hit my macros or like Mm -hmm. um, if uh, like I drank enough water, right. Or if I took, um, you know, Toby out for like a longer than normal walk and like, Oh, you know, I like that actually like, like gives me pleasure and satisfaction and joy. And yeah. think yeah. knowing that like I was able to contribute to like one of my bigger goals, like, you know, like, fuck, like in the short term, it probably seems like hella insignificant. Right. Yeah. But it's like, Oh, like just trusting that it like kind of compounds over, over like the years, over the months, whatever. Uh, yeah. makes me feel good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think for me, like, um at work just doing something thoughtful like actually like using like, pretty much I like work. using your brain like yeah seeing your coworker not not be then actually saying hi to them today <laughs> no, no 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 like like actually um doing something that challenges my brain a lot that's i really enjoy that shit like i don't know um i think a lot of people that know me likes i like mental challenges i like you know board games type of things because they all bring in a mental challenge i can maximum things i can think about like you know the aspects of it and stuff so whenever i do anything that has that thought process that's really nice uh i kind of throw in like i play some sudoku sometimes just throughout the day right mm. just some expert level games just try to you know, beat at the shortest amount of time um when i come home 3d printing actually makes me kind of excited or happy i guess because um when the part is successful it's actually really nice and it's actually very um i guess people don't really know about this but like for every successful print I do, there's probably three or four unsuccessful prints I've already done. Yeah. And then, but that all happened at the very beginning. So like at the beginning, I would like print like say 60 hours of stuff and I only have like two or three things to show for it, right? Mm -hmm. And then now I can consistently print things and it'll be a successful print uh, because I went through it, right? But then as soon as like something changes, like I have a new design, I have new filament I'm using, I have anything that changes, then it like changes all the process. But then I build a base, so then it's easy for me to get to a successful print now. Uh, so that brings me a lot of joy when I do get something successful. And the nice part is, like, especially for three D printing, is like once you figure it out, you figure it out. So as in, like that one thing you're making, you can make a billion of those now. Like mm-hmm. you already know how to do it. You just have to repeat again and again, right? Mm-hmm. Um, anytime I find something that like makes my life more efficient, it's fucking amazing. Like, yeah, I, like, I find great. that too. It's like, oh, I didn't know if I turned here, it's a little bit faster. Like, okay, one thing I always think about, and this is really dumb, but like when you go on Google, you type, you know, you want to go point A to point B. Back then it was just like, okay, this is the shortest route in terms of duration. And here's three other routes, right? Now I think they have a little leaf thing saying this is the shortest distance may, may not necessarily be the shortest route. Yeah. Like it's like fuel wise, it's yeah. the most efficient. Yeah. And then the next thing I thought about is like, okay, Google creates all these paths for us based on some approximation using the data they have from people driving and stuff like that. And some of it is based on facts using the road distance and the speed. Yeah. But do um, they consider speeding on like certain roads? Like, okay, so certain oh, roads is very that. easy to speed on, right? Like <laughs> yeah. certain roads, like I'm pretty sure everyone can think of like three roads that they normally take in a day and they're like, oh, for sure I can go like 10, 20 above the speed limit. Oh, yeah. No problem at all, right? I'm like, damn, but did, did Google know about this? And then, yeah, I just start thinking about those things. I like, I have a lot of like really random thought experiment. And for, for myself, it's actually kind of conflicting because I read these mindfulness books and they kind of say like, hey, you know, you should shut that part of your brain off sometimes because you want to like live in a moment. You don't want your brain to stop. Pretty much there's two separate self. There's you and there's your mind, right? And those yes. are two separate things. A lot of the mindful books, mindfulness books like t- talk about that. Supposed to um, look at how you feel. Yeah, but- be- I- aware of how you feel and how you yes. feel isn't who you are yes so like uh i've actually practiced some practiced some of those and i do feel that there are some differences like when you're mindful and when you're thinking there's like differences right mm-hmm. but at the same time um 
I don't know. I'm not ever really upset with my mind. Like sometimes I am when it's emotional. So like when you're in an emotional state, I think one of the books suggests like if you're angry, um, that's your mind being angry. But like you have to think of yourself as a different person than your mind and ask yeah. why is your mind angry right now, right? And you can kind of deduce all the things and you can solve those problems like that. Um, but I'm actually like for the most part generally pretty happy with my mind. I don't know. It's, it's kind of weird. It's like I know a lot of people think they are their mind and I don't necessarily think that, but I like engaging it. So it's almost like I know my mind is a tool and I love using the fuck out of it. I agree. Right. Um, so that's why for me, sometimes the mindfulness is very difficult because it's like, like I genuinely find happiness in using this thing, which is my brain and it brings me a lot of happiness. So then I get conflicted. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, should I turn it off? I don't know. Like, I actually love thought experiments. and I always create my own thought experiments. Like, like I think some of the craziest thoughts I have, and I think I said this in the last podcast, is like sometimes you have to be bored because when you're bored, you can create some of the most creative things in the world. And like whenever I walk Taro or whenever I'm doing something that I don't need to actively focus on my physical body or anything like that, then my mind can just race off and it can just think of like a billion different things. Like for example, if I'm at the mall and like, you know, my girlfriend's shopping or something and I'm just sitting there, like I would look at a store and I'll start thinking about like, hey, like where are the margins they make? How do they do this? Like oh, yeah. what are the stuff they do? What's some optimization? Or the or like maybe I'll see like a little bike go by and be like, hey, is there a better way of making that bike? And like it'll just race through all these things in my mind. Right. And I don't know. For me, a part of my happiness is literally going through like a lot of thought experiments. And most of the thought experiments I come up and sometimes I show them on the show. I come up with it while walking Taro, like literally just walking him around the neighborhood. And I'm like, oh, shit, this is something we should definitely talk about on the podcast because it's a really cool thought experiment. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's how I sustain my happiness throughout. When you were talking, I had a few things that reminded me of like little things that I do that make me happy. Yeah. And like one of them is when I'm waiting for like food to warm up or waiting for anything like yeah, something in a microwave or waiting for someone to leave a room or leave an area and I need to go there or something like that. I'll start doing some mind muscle connection work. <laughs> You're just fucking like <laughs> flexing your ass the whole time. Yeah. Or like doing like little squats and like little flexing this and that. And that. that just feels really nice because then you notice significant improvements. And I've like this week, I've been training this girl on my program and it's really gratifying seeing somebody that isn't as connected with their muscles and being able to show them how I do it and knowing how like oh I used to be at her her spot at one point but then I put it in all this small little work and so I can feel like all these little parts of my body that are like blind to her right now and it's just freaking amazing to see like the progress and like that I'm able to show someone it, but also that I'm able to feel it myself because I've done the work. And then when you said that I like to like pick things apart, I like doing that when I eat. So whenever I eat something that I didn't make myself, I like to try and think about how that person made it and what goes into it. Mm -hmm. And I'll try and recreate it, which Does I think is like so much fun and try and make it like exactly like reverse like engineer it. Mm. Yeah, reverse engineer it. Maybe you're doing your macros or like you won't be eating much of what other people make, right? Yeah, that's true. Just have it all <laughs> different now. Or like taking supplements is something that reminded me of what you were saying, R Star, with just trusting the process and like doing something small for yourself. Like every single time I take my creatine and I remember to like take my um, creatine and L carnitine and my protein, I'm like, damn, I'm going to get buff soon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think, like I said, even even if it doesn't work, it's, the placebo is probably going to work. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I actually thought very deeply about that, too. But, like, how much placebo affects and I don't know. Yeah, that, but also, like, uh, like what you said was, like, what's the worst that can happen from you taking it, right? And yeah. It's, like, mm -hmm. what you can gain from it is worth the risk. Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. I, I guess we, we talked about how we maintain our happiness. I think one thing I forgot to mention is I built my life around not being unhappy uh so some things i've removed is like i genuinely thought social media made me less happy uh, i think envy is a pretty big problem of mine of the of the sins it's probably like envy and gl gluttony if i fucking eat a lot is uh, envy the same as fomoing yes or you just don't give enough of a shit because i don't feel like you fomo that often no no, no 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 this is this is uh old out this is old jorge we're talking about like oh, back when okay. i was younger i felt like i envied a bit more hmm. um but I think uh, 
I always say this because I'm 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 hoping some some people listen is like giving up social media is kind of nice. It, it mm-hmm. removes a lot of that envy that goes on in my life. Um, I remove a lot of bullshit, so like I specifically like avoid drama. Um, I don't know, like some people, it's just kind of like they're a magnet to it. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I like very specifically remove myself from a lot, and it's some, sometimes it's not good. Like sometimes I miss out on some parts of the stuff where I had an opinion where I cannot voice it because I've removed myself from yeah. from the from the situation. Mm-hmm. Right. Can, uh, I, can I say something? Yeah. So um, what I've th- there's this really cool concept that I kind of like recently stumbled upon, uh, like maybe one or two months ago, and so like when you bring up social media and like envy and stuff, I I think I agree. Like for me, like I don't care you know, where somebody's at in their life or like what they're doing, what they have, whatever. It's like, I'm focused on my journey, but like what I think I use social media for is like, okay, so this, this concept that I like stumbled upon is like a finite time sink and an infinite time sink. Okay. So like a finite time sink would be like, I don't know, maybe like you, you go for like a run or like you play play game with Dota it's like X amount of hours right and so like that kind of time sink is like okay you can play you can like only spend a certain amount of time doing this and then like eventually you'll be like okay like you've reached the point where like you cannot do this anymore and then infinite time sink would be something like scrolling through TikTok like literally you could fucking scroll through TikTok like for a whole fucking day and like you don't need to think like there's no like physical limitation other than like maybe like your Food. fucking eyes dry out or something yeah, yeah, yeah. you know yeah. and Food so and water eyes drying out. Yeah. so i think that's why like certain things um is like such a like for me like the reason i go on social media is like like i find that whenever i go on social media it's because i'm fucking procrastinating from doing something right and like i need something to sink my time into to like not do this thing right so like a, a lot of me has kind of like tried to cut off social media because like I find myself like wasting a lot of unnecessary time scrolling through junk. And then like, I like to tell myself, Oh, like, like when I'm scrolling through TikTok, like it's like educational TikTok, right? <laughs> it's like, I'm learning and I'm growing from this, but like reality, like probably not. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so like TikTok is definitely like an infinite time sink. And yeah, I think that like, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. Like this is something that I'm working on consciously um to like like what you said like become a happier person is like like disconnecting more from social media and it's not for like you know like what you said what you were saying about envy but i think it's more so like it'll make me less of a procrastinator and Mm. like actually like be more um like productive yeah yeah is by like not fucking like finding different time sinks to like not just like infinitely scroll through like videos or like reels or whatever I get what you mean because if i scroll too long or on social media for too long it just feels like shit afterwards like regardless of what content i take in even if i'm taking educational content it definitely does feel like i'm like just doing it to avoid doing something more responsible mm-hmm. or something more productive yeah uh, yeah i mean i should on social media a lot but i wouldn't say it's all bad but the one thing i still use and i think i think it's for me i procrastinate a lot on is like you uh, on you, youtube youtube 100 percent. Right? Yeah, like yeah, fucking rabbit hole shit for yeah. sure so like sometimes i watch some of that shit so i'm not completely off of it but i feel like um i've taken myself my profile off of it so as in like your ghost nothing's like personalized to me mm. so like i think one of the things i hated the most and i've talked about this multiple times was that you see the persona yeah you see the best part of that person's life and only the best part of not just that person say everyone's life but you don't see the part i care about most is like how what did they do to get to where they were right Mm -hmm. and then people i feel like have a very um very i guess unrealistic thought of the reality now like they think that you know life should be like this it's you know this easy and then they think it's like they deserve to have this because this other person have it and shit like that and it's just like i feel like it's very toxic in my mind so then moving my profile and myself out of it i don't get personalized posts so like when i see like some person from europe doing something great i'm like okay yeah that doesn't personally affect me Mm -hmm. and i'm just you know seeing uh enjoyable content right 
So that, that that's kind of a nice part. But I feel like the goal of social media, like in, you know, Instagram, TikTok, all that stuff is to make it personalized. So you see like what your friends do, the best of what your friends it's do. Like and you're stuff shilling like that. yourself, like your image and like yeah. you see other people's images and like yeah. all that stuff. And but then, and then a bit of the envy starts coming in. You're like, oh fuck, you know, I'm the same age as this person. Why am I there yet? And all that shit. But then I feel like ever since I've removed that and consistently removed that for a pretty long duration, like I don't really ever get that. Like I don't ever get, that's one of the unhappiness in my life that I don't ever really get. Um, which is good because like that's something nice. I think overall, like whether you're on YouTube or TikTok or Instagram or anything, I think the one large umbrella reason why it doesn't feel good is because you're kind of taking away the focus on your life. Yeah, it sounds very selfish, but you're focusing on things that don't necessarily matter so much, and it's taking away effort and productivity that you could be adding to your own life to enrich your own right. life. Yeah. It's like you're spending this time, right. When you could be like, like doing something else that actively like is more directly correlated to like where you want to go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's, uh, let's wrap up with some stuff. Um, all right. Quick, quick question, quick answers to some quick questions. Uh, was the happiest moment of your life? Is that an easy one? I guess so. All right. Wait, what? I don't want to answer first. Oh, <laughs> fuck. Uh, okay, I have one. I guess I always go back to one of this. Um, this is the the whole story of me going to Korea and accomplishing something. I think that was really cool. I mm-hmm. think I was super happy when I did do that. Pretty much I went to Korea. I didn't know the language. didn't know anything. Didn't even know what they ate. I was not into any Korean drama or any of that shit. I just decided this is a spot I want to go. Um, and then, yeah, went through some hardships there and got over alive. So I was pretty happy there. Yeah. I, I dude, for me, I, I think this is one of the hardest questions. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I, for me, like, I don't know. It's very hard to like, say, it. Just pinpoint, say what we all think. you know, like a, a specific moment of happiness. Cause I think like, like there's so many different forms of happiness, right? Like there's a lot of times where like, you know, let me help you get out of trouble. It's, I think, one the of these days. Day? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's just say that. Yeah. <laughs> Your wedding day. Yeah. Uh, how about you, Viv? You, are you scrolling through shit? I'm looking at my album. Okay, while she's looking at an album, uh, l- little things that make you happy so we are connected to our our listeners. All right, one of them. Uh, for me, taking shit at home because I have a bidet makes me so much happier than taking shit outside of my home. Oh, you're talking about instant, instant, when just I know, whatever. When I know I haven't things. talked to a friend in a while, I message them and I won't have anything to say. And I'll just be like, hi, have a good day. Bye. That makes you the really small little happy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, oh. Anything for you? Our star? Um, PG. Are we keeping it PG? No, anything, dude. What? All right. Sex. Nice. nice. Um, <laughs> what's another one? Uh, when you get an extra, extra order of something, extra nugget, extra whatever might be on your order. Oh, are we still naming stuff? Yeah, sure. When you get a really good parking spot. Ooh, oh, dude, that's hard to. That's hard. That's a pretty good one there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, probably like getting to a place earlier than expected. Like if Google's like, oh, it's like thirty minutes. You get there in like I don't know twenty three minutes. I'd be Ooh. like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of his effort. Some of his <laughs> super fucking fast. Oh, on days when I'm like. I haven't had that much caffeine lately, so I give I let myself drink coffee, and I'm like, "Fuck yes!" <laughs> Ooh, this is some um, okay, well, okay, this is weird, but like, um, like you ever like do something like you peel off a sticker or like unwrap packaging, and it's like just perfectly like yeah. exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is like so gratifying. That feels pretty good when you put on clean new socks. When you change your bed sheets and you climb Ooh, into it. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, they change bed sheets pretty good. Fuck, you guys are coming up with really good ones right now. I can't mm-hmm. think of any. Fuck. <laughs> or for girls specifically, when you like shave your legs and then you go into your bed sheets and it feels so freaking soft. Do you do the combination? Do you specifically shave your legs on days you change your bed sheets? <laughs> no, I change my <laughs> bed sheets more often than I shave my legs, I think. Oh, yeah, I know. But like, you just change your bed sheet and you're like, oh, it's- shit, I'm going to shave my legs today. I feel this. <laughs> I don't think I've done that intentionally, but it feels fucking oh. good. Uh, okay, here's a stupid one for me. Whenever I get free food, any free food. Oh, Ooh. whoa. Very, um, very low judgment on the value. Uh, whenever there's any free work events too. That's usually pretty like fun. Free is free. Yeah, yeah, free is free. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
um when you get a good deal by chance when you weren't like specifically looking for one. Oh yeah, yeah. Dude, that feels amazing yeah. like you're just like oh fuck i'm feeling like this right now it's like what it's a two for one yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, yeah especially that or like okay uh i don't know if you guys use camel 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 on for for amazon no so okay guys search it up this is a crazy hack so camel camel camel.com three camels um <laughs> You put the link of whatever you're finding on Amazon and it will give you the history of the price of the thing. Whoa. Oh, that's how Amazon FBA people do it, right? Yeah. And then by chance, sometimes you're just looking for something and by chance it's literally the lowest it's been in like two years. And you're like, oh my God, I have to buy right now. Or what? you just got baited. <laughs> oh, damn. I know this, this podcast is not sponsored by camel, camel, camel.com, but <laughs> no sponsor at all. When you make eye contact with, with a stranger and you like give them a smile. And they smile back at you. Oh, that Ooh. is okay. Here's a, a dumb one. one. Uh, when someone interesting actually like engage in small talk at like the gym or something. I don't know. Like I sometimes I don't like talking that much at the gym. <laughs> Usually I don't, but in the sauna or steam room, it's kind of nice sometimes. Uh, or you're just sitting there. The opposite. When you need a machine and it's empty. Ooh, that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Or uh, like something, something new or different that like has happened to you and somebody notices. Like ooh, like. Getting your hair cut or something? Or, yeah, or I like read that on a Reddit. new shirt or like new socks or like you intentionally like matched or like color coordinated like, yo, I really like your outfit today. You're like, yeah, yeah I intentionally matched my shirt and my pants. Ooh. <laughs> when, um, when everyone on the team wears red. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't know if I can wear to the world. Uh, I mean, so I don't relate to the last one you said, Arsar, because I wear the same fucking thing every day. <laughs> I actually read that on... um ask men the subreddit that a lot of men overall i think on all of the subreddit posts that i read say that like men don't get complimented enough and like if anyone compliments you you like hold that compliment for a long time so i started i think all of you guys know whenever i notice anyone has a haircut i'm like oh did you get a haircut nice haircut because <laughs> of that reddit <laughs> i mean so you know how like in um the asian culture it's usually like a compliment say oh have you lost weight and stuff like that it's uh-huh. usually a compliment so like my badminton friends just always fucking ask me that, right? And like they know I'm trying to gain weight too. So I'm like, fuck <laughs> off, guys. So every time you're looking, looking a little scrawny over there. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen you in a couple months. Have you lost weight? I was like, no, dude, I have not lost any weight. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> like, bitch, are you fucking <laughs> talking shit about my pride right now? I mean, so in the Asian community, that's usually generally a very yeah. like compliment thing, right? Like if you tell oh, like someone you're looking you lost skinnier weight. these days. Yeah, and then for the most part for girls they'll be like, oh you yeah, know yeah. that's so nice and right, stuff like that but for me i'm like shut the fuck up right now <laughs> i know i know a good one when um i let lumi out in the mornings and she pees and poops Ooh. i'm like oh yes nice <laughs> okay here's the opposite here's a shit one when taro poops i pick it up and then we walk like three blocks and, and he does again. his poops again and oh. i already wrapped up the bag and i'm like god damn it <laughs> <laughs> um all right i mean you guys have any other random ones no I mean, one random one. I think it's not as random, but like when your schedule just works right, like just for a day, just everything just aligns. There's there like probably like ten, nine of ten days, it doesn't work like that. But the one day it does, you're like, oh my god! Like right when I finished this, this other thing happened right away, and it was like on schedule. Perfect. Yeah. All right, I have one more. Yeah. When you have something stuck in your teeth, and then you fucking <laughs> floss, and you're like, ooh, that's mm. good. Mm-hmm. Okay, I have one that's not common. When you throw away stuff when you go traveling. <laughs> what the? F- <laughs> oh yeah, we went to LA and Jorge left with less things than he brought. <laughs> I mean, I don't buy much. Okay, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, like I said, I'm very selfish guy, but I don't usually buy souvenirs because it doesn't bring you joy. It doesn't bring. I mean, <laughs> it will bring other people joy for sure. And honestly, other people being happy does make me happy, but. I like to travel very light, and that mm. makes me even happier. Oh, plus I usually just tell them my experience, and they're just pretty idea. happy from that. I'm like, hey, you, you like to go there? Go! I know <laughs> you can do it. I know one really specific one. All right. When you heat up your food in a microwave, and it's the exact temperature that you want it to be, Ooh. And you can eat it right away. Fifty nine second minute rice. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> I, I can relate because uh back like sometimes like when you heat up pizza pops or whatever it's like sometimes like a little overcooked sometimes like like undercooked and then it's like sometimes when you 
know like exactly what temperature it is it's like all right this is like Mm. Well, that's just pizza pop. But like, you know how I measure pizza pop? You have to have a little bit of the sauce coming out, and then it's perfect. like the little like, <laughs> dude, yeah. dude, that's like and that's perfect. Like, literally three seconds later, it's gonna explode. That's just <laughs> what happens. No, like, no, 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 just a tiny bit. Yeah, like, yeah, you I, have to see the yeah, sauce you have on the to outside. Edge on your pizza yeah. pop. Yeah. But then yeah. literally, if you were to wait like an extra three or five seconds, it's just, it's gonna blow. <laughs> that's the perfect spot. <laughs> Uh, Same with Tosquitos. Ooh, oh, yeah. You have to have a bit of the sauce come out of the ends, and you know it's fucking perfect. <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay, I think one of them, I think we can we all relate to. Come on, Alvin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think one we can all relate to is I think when your significant other or any of your friends kind of like read your mind, it's kind of nice. Oh. They, mm. they get you something you want at the moment just because they know and stuff. Yeah. That's a that's a very nice one. I think I think everyone feels grateful for 100%. that. Or you're thinking the same thing. You guys just look at each other. You know you're on the same wavelength, and you're like, "Ooh, yes." Know what's needed <laughs> for sure. All right, uh, so we're gonna wrap this up. This is a uh, our happiness podcast. I think uh, in the past, I think they suggested this, which I really appreciate that for because she was saying like we talk a bit more about like you know what makes us sad, depression, all that shit. But let's talk about the flip side. So I'm glad we had this conversation. Hmm. Uh, I say this is completely customized to everyone, so everyone's an individual. Although the three of us always fucking echo chambers really hard, <laughs> which we kind of did here. I think it's completely separate for everyone else. Like maybe someone like just from excitement, like some people just get a rush, right? Some people live life for the rush and mm-hmm. that for them, their happiness is like, pure excitement is, is, is what they go for. Right. Then go, rushes. Oh, go big. live, go live your life. If that's what brings you joy. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, please put some comments below on the little things that make you happy. Live, right? laugh, love. Yeah, yes. shit like that. Can I mean, do you, guys have any, <laughs> do you guys have any quotes you live by or any shit you want to share that makes you happy? Hold on. Mine's always the same. It's always the fucking C la vie. Just fucking live your life. It is what it is. Is how how I always live my life. And I always like that. YOLO. Yep. I have... Three. Ooh, oh. all right. Sing us a rap song right now. Okay, no, I'm only gonna name two. One of them's okay. <laughs> <laughs> one of them is you did not come this far just to come this far, and the other one is the past stays present until it's processed, and that one's more contributing Whoa. to happiness. Oh, actually, your first one reminds me of the J Cole lyrics. Um, N word. You went <laughs> a long way. Unfortunately, you went the wrong way. I, I mean, don't that, think that, it's the same. That, that doesn't affect happiness. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying it's kind of nice to be thoughtful of like what you're doing and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Good close. Do you have any? Yeah. Was yours live, love, love, or whatever? No, it's not. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, if you love pumpkin spice lattes and shit, I won't. I, I won't complain. I don't live by. I don't live by any quotes. No. Ooh. I live by a lot of quotes actually. Our star lives by Yolo. fuck yeah America. Fuck yeah. <laughs> 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 all right so we're gonna end this off uh for youtube guys uh don't forget to like comment subscribe and turn on your notification bell uh we usually don't get any comments so i'm gonna try to push for it so if you guys can comment on um if, the if little shit 20 different unique comments jorge will buy the next podcast ice cream oh oh yeah actually Ooh. actually if you actually uh, how we have a draw now guys yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 3d print you there's a thing um all right, if you're in five different video comments, meaningful comments, it can't just be like you suck or something. Throw all five of them. Uh, you'll be can't on be a, first. Yeah. <laughs> you'll you'll be eligible for our next uh, food podcast. So use our food podcast. Oh, yeah. I buy a bunch Whoa. of food and we just compare. We just make a tier of all the food. So it's pretty much free food for you. And yeah. it could be something you like because you get it. You kind you of get a choice. You, cho- choose. Uh, you kind of what? get a choice because you say fucking caviar. We ain't doing it, okay? <laughs> um, but yeah, if, if you guys uh, want to participate a bit, I think participation is always fun. Um, yeah, that would be great. Um, mm. I think that's about all I had. So folks out there, stay happy. Live your life. Um, winter's coming, so don't get too sad. And yeah. Live, laugh, love. Live, laugh, love. <laughs> Motherfuckers. See you. See right, you. Bye. Thanks.